So this is gonna be more of a tech vlog for today where I do some testing with the brand new Ryzen 9 9950X. This is the 16 core, 32 thread, new Zen 5 CPU from AMD that just came out. I'm actually gonna be testing it in a very unique scenario inside of my Velka Pro build, which is inside of the nice Velka 3 case, super small form factor, four liter chassis, which currently has a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D chip in it, also a 16 core, 32 thread part. I use this for work and play, mostly for work, so I'm more concerned about the compute performance between the two chips, but we're gonna test gaming as well. Although this is a fairly niche scenario that's not gonna apply to many people because I have inside of this build an RTX 4060 Ti from Paylet, their eight gig model. And generally speaking, when most people buy something like a Ryzen 9 chip, they're gonna be pairing a high-end graphics card with it, like an RTX 4080 or 4090, for example, or something equivalent from AMD. But the 4060 Ti is pretty much the fastest GPU that will fit inside of the Velka 3 in a lot of cases that are around the four liter mark. So we're gonna find out how much the extra gaming performance on the X3D chip matters when we're now in a heavily GPU bound scenario with uh, more of a mid-range graphics card. If you already watched the Velka Pro video, which I highly suggest you check out if you haven't seen it yet, then you already know that this CPU is running undervolted and we're getting some nice uh, performance and thermals out of that. I'm gonna fully assume that we are gonna have to undervolt the 9950X as well. The 9700X that I reviewed last week stayed nice and cool in our testing, but it's also a 65 watt TDP chip and it just doesn't draw nearly as much power as the 9950X, so we are probably gonna see some much higher temperatures right out of the box with this CPU and with this small knock to a cooler. It's a great cooler for what it is, an NHL9A. I'm just not 100% confident that it's gonna be able to handle this chip at stock. So we are gonna do some undervolting. For now, I've already run all the benchmarks I need to on our 7950X3D. So now it's just a matter of swapping the CPU and running the benchmarks on this part and then doing some undervolting. We'll get to that part as well. Now swapping out the CPU should be a fairly terrible experience because there's so many screws that we'll have to undo just to get this cooler off. A, because the cooler needs to be uninstalled from the backside, behind the motherboard and what's in the way of that, the GPU, so we'll have to remove that. And also just the design of this case and it being a super small form factor will require us to remove, I think like 15 or 16 screws before we can actually get this cooler off. So let's go ahead and do that and be on our way to benchmarking. The 9950X is installed, the tests have been run and oh boy, she thirsty. In Cinebench, the 9950X saw a peak system power draw of 350 watts. That's over 100 watts more than the 7950X 3D. And in that same test, the 9950X's peak CPU package hit 200 watts compared to the 7950X 3D at 139 watts. But this isn't really surprising since the 9900X has a higher socket power or PPT of 200 watts, which it definitely seems to be maxing out here, while the X3D chip caps its PPT at just 162 watts. When gaming in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, the 9950X reached a peak of 394 watts for total system power, that's with the GPU of course, versus 359 watts with the 7950X 3D. Peak CPU package in-game was 105 watts for the 9950X and 73 watts for the Zen 4 chip. It's worth noting that the difference in power consumption while gaming isn't as massive as it is in something like Cinebench, since the CPU isn't being fully utilized and the 4060 Ti, which is being utilized, is helping close that gap. But the 9950X isn't just thirsty, she toasty too. In Cinebench, it maxes out at 96C with an average of 95C, while the 7950X 3D peaks and averages out at 89C. The Zen 5 chip runs hotter in Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well, peaking at 87 degrees Celsius, nine degrees warmer than the 7950X 3D. On average, it runs at 79C or six degrees warmer than the X3D. Fortunately, that extra power and heat does give us a lot more performance in Cinebench, with the 9950X getting a multi-thread score of 40,237 points, roughly 21% faster than the 7950X 3D. And in the single thread test, it outperforms the 7950X 3D by 20%. In CPU mark, the 9950X is only 2% faster in the multi-thread test, but it does see a solid 14% uplift with its single-thread score. In Puget Bench's Adobe Premiere Pro standard benchmark, the CPUs are pretty much comparable with the 9950X scoring just 0.5% higher, that's pretty much margin of error, though in Puget's Photoshop test, it outperforms the 7950X 3D by 11%. In Handbrake, the 9950X transcoded a 4K video file to 1080p five seconds quicker than the X3D chip, which was 8% slower in completing the task. 
So depending on the application and task, when you're comparing it to the 7950X 3D, the 9900X can range from negligible improvements to huge 20% gains when it comes to compute performance. It's a wide range, but overall the Zen 5 16 core is definitely the more powerful chip for professional use. And yes, it does draw more power and run notably hotter than the 7950X 3D, uh, so we will be undervolting it later. But first, let's take a look at some gaming benchmarks. In 3D Mark's Time Spy Extreme, the CPUs are pretty much neck and neck with differences of 0.1% in either direction. This is clearly within margin of error and there's no clear winner here. It's basically a draw. We actually do get to see some measurable difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The 7950X 3D beats the 9950X in average frame rates by 1.5% and outperforms its 1% lows by a whopping 20%. So that's better frame time consistency overall. But naturally the X3D would lead by a wider margin if we were using a faster GPU than the RTX 4060 Ti. More or less the same story in Forza Horizon 5. The 7950X 3D sees a 1% gain in average FPS and a 9% uplift in 1% lows. So yeah, I mean, with the 4060 Ti, we're not seeing a significant difference here, but for the vast majority of users who are pairing a Ryzen 9 with a high-end GPU, like a 4080 or a 4090, uh, the X3D chip is clearly going to be the stronger choice for gaming. All right, let's do some undervolting on this bad boy on our 9950X. We are in the ASUS bio right now. We're gonna go into advanced AI tweaker. Your mileage may vary based on the BIOS that you have, but essentially somewhere you're gonna be able to find precision boost overdrive, PBO, specifically PBO2. And once you go in there, you've got some more settings here. We're gonna start off with curve optimizer. This is basically gonna allow us to shift our voltage and frequency curve so that we can essentially achieve the same clock speeds at a lower voltage or rather higher clock speeds at the same voltage. And that's gonna essentially give us more or less an overclock. We want it to affect all the cores. So we're gonna to go to all cores and this is uh, by, by undervolting, right? We wanna do a negative offset here. And then we enter a value in here that's gonna represent the magnitude of, of our shift. Uh, and this is going to be heavily dependent on the quality of your CPU silicon. This is purely silicon lottery. It's not fair, I know. I've had some CPUs that can get away with 30, and I've had others that can get away with just five. Um, I'm gonna go with, uh, well, I've already done a lot of testing, but I can tell you on this 9950X that AMD has sampled me, I can get away with 25, which is actually pretty good. Um, it's, it's rock solid stable at 25. If I go to 30, it crashes immediately. It just freezes up as soon as I start like a Cinebench run. So 25 is what I got. I'm, I'm curious if AMD cherry picked the, the samples for press, but that's a topic for a different video. So 25 is what we're going with here. And if I run some tests with just the settings that we've changed here on this page, we're automatically gonna see higher clock speeds, greater performance uh, at the same temperature and voltage values for the most part. So uh, that's great and all. Uh, extra performance is basically an overclock, but we're still gonna be hitting 95C because that's what we're getting at stock. So in order to uh, still get the benefits, maybe some of the benefits that this, this undervolt offers while reducing temperatures, we have a couple different options here. We could go to precision boost overdrive, do manual, and we can set a PPT limit, which is basically saying, uh, I'm gonna limit how much power I want the motherboard to give our CPU. So by default, it's 200, but you could do 150. And then you just reboot into Windows and run some tests to see if uh, if this value is, is good for your needs. If you're getting the performance you want, if you're achieving the temperatures that you want, um, and then you can go ahead and adjust accordingly. Come back into the BIOS. Okay, maybe that was a little too high on the on the temp still. Let's, let's lower the, the wattage to 120. But for now, I'm actually gonna skip that and do, do it the other way, which is a thermal throttle limit. And me personally, I don't like getting much hotter than 85C. So it's gonna, it's gonna cap out at 85C no matter what we do. It might go to 86, but it's not gonna get much hotter than that. And this is what I feel comfortable with. So this is one profile that we're gonna be testing just in, in a few moments here. And then we're also gonna test uh, another profile where we, we remove the temp limit and we just do the PBO curve. So that'll show up on the benchmark slides as uh, 9950X PBO. And then you'll also see 9950X PBO uh, plus 85C, which is indicating the temp limit. So that's how you're gonna read those slides. And of course, we're testing both of these profiles against the stock profile as well. And it's gonna be really interesting to see the differences in power, temperatures, performance, and clock speeds between these three profiles. So let's take a look at the results. For power consumption, the undervolted 9950X, whether or not we're using the temp limit, saw relatively the same peak power draw in Cinebench, plus or minus three to nine watts versus stock. However, with PBO alone, its peak CPU package power draw did drop 15 watts below stock and 17 watts below itself with PBO and the temp limit enabled, which brings down the total system power draw slightly in games, but still not as low as the 7950X 3D. Taking a look at thermal performance, as we can see, adding a temp limit of 85 degrees Celsius brings the 9950X's Cinebench temps down to 
85C. It's a 10 or 11 degree drop from stock, or if we had just done the PBO overclock with no temp limit in place. The undervolt temps are also lower when gaming, hitting 79 to 80 degrees at peak, down from 87C at stock. Both undervolt profiles of the 9950X averaged a temperature of 72C, or 7 degrees below stock, and even slightly cooler than the 7950X 3D. Here's a look at average clock speeds in a multi-thread Cinebench run, where we can see the 9950X with PBO and temp limit hitting 4,222 MHz, which is about 200 MHz slower than with just PBO, and about 100 MHz slower than stock. Despite this, the Temp Limited 9950X outperforms its stock profile with a Cinebench multi-thread score of 42,096, that's about 5% faster than stock and 3% slower than with PBO only. We can see this reflected in a real-world scenario in Adobe Premiere Pro, where the Temp Limited 9950X performs somewhere between stock and its PBO-only profile. It finished the 4K export 4.5% slower than it did with PBO only, and although it was only 0.75% faster than its stock profile, the Temp Limit allowed it to run 10 degrees cooler on average, which is still a big win. So here are my takeaways as to which of these CPUs is better suited for this particular build. Again, this is a very niche scenario that we're talking about today inside of the tiny Velka 3 case, a 4-liter chassis with an RTX 4060 Ti. Given the build, gaming is kind of a wash. You can give half a point, I suppose, to the 7950X 3D. It did have stronger frame times, 1% lows, better consistency overall, but it's it wasn't a huge meaningful difference, I would say. So gaming's kind of a draw. Compute performance definitely goes to the 9950X 3D. It was faster across the board, sometimes not by a lot and other times by a lot, but overall, definitely the more, the more powerful chip in that regard. Power consumption award definitely goes to the 7950X 3D. Uh, even undervolting the Zen 5 chip doesn't really really get you close to the stock X3D's power draw. Thermal performance is a win for the 7950X3D as well. It just runs cooler out of the box, and uh, but you can, I will say, you can with the 9950X get it to easily match that temperature profile by just setting that temp limit in the BIOS like we did. And then price goes to 7950X3D. It's about uh, $125 cheaper right now than the 9950X. Uh, at launch. I think the 9950X is launching MSRP 650. You get the 7950X 3D on Amazon for 525. It's just a lot cheaper. Overall, I have to give the crown to, drum roll please. That's not even a drum roll, it's terrible. Uh, the 7950X 3D would be my pick for this build. Uh, unless you have money to burn and you really need the extra compute performance, which the X3D already has a lot of, the Zen 4 chip is just better suited for a, a super small form factor build like this one, and given the current pricing, it's a better value too. And that value just increases. If, if we were to just like double the size of that Velka 3 case where you could actually fit a 4080 or a 4090, 7900X, XTX or something like that, then the, the value of the X3D chip just increases even more because you're able to actually leverage uh, more of its performance in, in games for, for higher frame rates and things like that. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this one, guys. I will continue to test these new chips in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for more Ryzen 9000 content coming soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.